Howdy, welcome back. So we'll begin introducing the address sanitizer. What you can go ahead and see here um, on screen is a slide on address sanitizer. I'm gonna hop over to the web page. It has similar information and that's actually where a lot of this was derived. Down in the right-hand corner of the screen, uh, you won't be able to click it in this video, but uh, in the slides provided to you at the end of today's lesson, you can go ahead and click uh, that link to access the documentation. We, we are presently at the time of this video using Clang 10 in this course. So you will need to ensure that the documentation that you're viewing aligns with the version of the compiler that we are currently using. So let me go ahead and move over to the address sanitizer documentation. And just a brief overview, I mean, kind of reading it off the page here, is that the address sanitizer is a fast memory error detector. It consists of a compiler instru instrumentation module and a runtime library. So there's going to be a compile time component to it as well as a uh, runtime uh, component. And it can detect the following types of bugs. Out of ac uh, bounds, access to the free store stack and global variables, use after free, use after return, use after scope, uh, double free and valid free and memory leaks, which is experimental uh, within this version of address uh, sanitizer. For memory leaks in this course, we will use Valgrind, so I'm not going to um, introduce that component here with address sanitizer, um, but I believe in you know the most recent uh, version of Clang, I think this is implemented, but please don't uh, quote me on that. So let's go ahead and hop over to VS Code so that we can take a look at some of these examples that I put together for us. So the first example here, I'll go ahead and compile um, well, I'll walk you through it real quick, uh, even though it's an example that we showed on the slides earlier um, today. And then I'm going to compile it without the uh, uh, address sanitizer, and then I'll compile it after so you're able to see the difference and kind of the uh, utility of the latter. But what we can see here in our main function, we're simply declaring a constant on the side int k array size. It's initialized with 10, we throw an array uh, on the free store of uh, size 10, we assign its address to this uh, pointer to an integer array, and then we loop through and we can see here we have an out of bounds access to that array because we are looping while i is less than or equal to array size. Again, we went through this earlier. So let's go ahead and compile it without the address sanitizer. So I'll hop over here clear my screen, compile, run. And we can see here, there's no output and no kind of uh, communication that we're having that invalid read there. So this could sneak by, eventually it will catch up to us, uh, but we'd probably like to know more immediately whether or not you know, a bug such as this is presenting within our code. Well, address sanitizer can tell us that. So if I go ahead and compile with, a, with um, F sanitizer, which is this, dash f sanitize equals address comma null. And then there's a couple of additional arguments here that are relevant or irrelevant depending on your level of optimization. I'm just going to include it here for completeness. So I have that specified as a flag to cling. It knows that we are going to be compiling with and we should be adding in the kind of address sanitizer components uh, to the resultant uh, executable. And then when we run it, um, some additional monitoring will occur, but um, it will also help us isolate these sorts of bugs that we noted. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the resultant binary and we can see here, there's a number of things printed to standard output. And we can see here that address sanitizer reported an error. It found a heat buffer overflow and then a bunch of kind of information, but we can see here a write of size four, which is actually the size of an integer, was attempted in kind of an invalid region of memory. We can see the stack trace here. So kind of going through, there was some startup of getting this all up and running. And then we can see our main function here. And actually where at the zeroth number, where the issue, where, where, where the bug presented. We can see it's in this asam1.cc file line 11 and location 59. And on my Mac, I can actually command click this and my cursor actually goes directly to that location. Imagine if this was, you know, presenting in some code that you wrote, you started to see some, you know, kind of wonky behavior occurring. And then, you know, you're kind of going, you know, where is this happening? 
um, which for statement or even, you know, otherwise, whereas, you know, this invalid uh, memory access presenting, well, with a DREF sanitizer, it's pretty easy to uh, narrow it down to the actual position. So again, we can see here that that error occurred, um, zero bytes to the right of this array, um, 10 times four gets us to 40. And again, some additional information here. But what all we really needed to get to that line number of that error was this part up here. And we could see the actual line number in terms of where it presented. Okay, so moving on to the second um, example here. This is going to go to back to that linked data structure. Um, I, I introduced this uh, code in a previous, um, uh, previous video of today's lesson. What's essentially happening here is we're calling delete and then we're attempting to access that. So this is a use after free or use after delete. So I go ahead and compile. In the terminal window, I'm going to compile without the address sanitization. I'll go ahead and run the resultant um, executable. And we can see here that a very cryptic error message was reported by the runtime system. Double free detected and tcatch to aborted. So our program suddenly stopped running. Now imagine you're implementing, I don't know, a homework like Mountain Pass 2 uh, using dynamic memory. Um, you know, maybe in a I don't know, imagine this error presenting in that machine problem. Where would you look? There's multiple files, there's multiple locations. Uh, maybe this didn't present uh, with one of your test cases and then you finally put something together based on uh, kind of the feedback we've or lack thereof in uh, Prairie Learn um, because you know those test cases do communicate a little bit about what's being tested but not the individual test case. But let's say you're motivated to create some additional uh, test input files to mount and pass, and now you observe this. Where would you begin looking? Well, with address sanitize, we can go ahead and compile with it. I'll pause why it's uh, compiling. I guess I should specify that the reason why I'm uh, compiling, uh, pausing is it does take a little bit while because I am working in a Docker uh, container with limited resources. Okay, we're done compiling. Let's go ahead and run the resultant executable. And right away, we can see that we're confronting with, you know, a number of kind of different things to communicate to us that, hey, address sanitizer found an issue with the code we wrote. If we go ahead and look, you know, kind of through this, we can begin uh, to decompose it. It's saying a read of size eight, which is actually going to, I guess, in this case, be the uh, size of um, that pointer. It's going to be actually on that line, I believe, 19.4. So if we go ahead and just click this, we can see that, okay, there's something problematic about what we're attempting to do on line 19. And as we continue to read, so the issue was with this read. So let's continue to kind of look at it. The output is saying, okay, there's a bunch of addresses here. It's located eight bytes inside of us. So, okay, 16-byte region. So, okay, maybe this is the 16-byte region. Um, and this is, you know, eight bytes of it. Um, okay, well, you know, irrespective as to that, we can see here by freed by t thread TO0. So it looks like there was some sort of delete invoked on that object. Um, and we can see where it was previously allocated. So kind of putting this all together, what address sanitizer is reporting is, hey, that node was previously allocated, you know, somewhere within it looks like main on this line. It was that object was freed on, it looks like that, so actually you can see here, line 14, okay, new node one. So that's where it was allocated. Here's where it was deallocated. Again, command clicking on that line. And here's where the access occurred. And putting all this together, it becomes you know, pretty clear that, hey, we're attempting to work with a um, or attempting to access a member of an object whose memory has been deallocated for us. And again, just compare that to this. This is not informative. This tells us the whole kind of life cycle of that dynamically allocated object from when it was allocated, including the function that it was allocated in down to the line number in the corresponding for source file. And then again, where it was deallocated, and then the actual read failure. So you kind of have a complete picture now as to what's going on. So again, this is some motivation for using address sanitizer. I'll move on to the next example here. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and show this example, and then I, I know the, the time's adding up here, so I'll move on to the, um, to, to the next tool we're going to introduce after this. And you can run through the remaining examples that were presented in the uh, early video of uh, this lesson on your own. Um, so in this example, it's just that simple traversal limit visiting these two nodes that are strung um, together through pointers in memory. Okay. So we have this iterator and we're just simply walking through each one, visiting each one, outputting its value, its state, the value stored in its data member um, to standard output and then moving that pointer to the next node in the sequence. And we're continuing to do that until we visited every node in the sequence. We know we've done that because the last nodes next will point to the null pointer. So let's go ahead and compile this. Go ahead and now run it and notice here we're observing a segmentation fault. And that is because on line 23, iters at this point is pointing to the null pointer because the last node in the sequence, its next was the null pointer that gets assigned to iter. And here we're attempting to dereference the null pointer. Now in your programs later on uh, in the semester when we have some MPs associated with uh, dynamic memory, it's not going to be as clear cut necessarily as this. So the additional diagnostics that are going to be afforded to us by address sanitizer is going to be um, invaluable. So let's go ahead and see, okay, this, you know, segmentation fault, it's cryptic. I don't even know what line number it occurred on. I, you know, this could be anywhere in my program. Let's get some additional information by running the address sanitizer. Okay, we're compiled and we're ready to execute. So let's go ahead and click into my terminal window and run results in executable. And okay, we're confronted with some additional output from the address sanitizer. We can see here on line 23, um, 23, there is member access within the null pointer of type node. So there's some sort of undefined behavior going on here. And actually, if we begin looking at what address sanitizer is communicating to us, and we'll get into the this undefined behavior sanitizer in the next um, lesson, but we can see here as reported by address sanitizer that the signal is caused by a read memory access error. The address points to the zero of page. So right here, this is enough to communicate to us that we attempted to read some sort of memory, that that memory was, um, or that the address um, of the memory that we attempted to read from was invalid. And we can see that that actually occurred on line 23 of main right here. So just, you know, clicking, literally clicking within, um, you know, this, uh, the, the output uh, in our visual terminal from address sanitizer, we can get directly to where that segmentation fault occurred. Again, compare that to when we ran this executable without uh, the address sanitizer. All we saw was segmentation fault. And again, if this was something like not to pass, it's like, where does that happen? Well, here, you know, you've narrowed it down pretty, pretty well. And if you add in this additional null check, um, which is right here, that's actually going to run the sanitizer that we're going to talk about in the subsequent uh, video, which will actually say, hey, doing this is undefined behavior. You're attempting to access some member which doesn't exist inside the, you know, a, a pointer to nothing. Um, and here's where you're attempting to do that. So it, it becomes very clear again, you know, what file is this happening on? What line in that file? What function? You know, right here, the function, it's main. Uh, so there's a bunch of diagnostic, uh, you know, information here that's invaluable to you. And it's going to be so much more helpful to use than kind of just this segmentation fault where it's like, where? Well, here it's exactly where. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next uh, lesson video here where we are going to get into the undefined behavior sanitizer. Then we'll move into Valgrind and we'll close up with just kind of a listing of the other uh, tools afforded to us by the uh, Clank compiler.